Hi, I'm Steel22, you can call me Steel, and welcome to my full completion and exploration guide for Act 6, Chapter 1, Quest 3, A Father's Concern, the third video in a series of 24 guides for Act 6. In this video, I'll be showing you how to work through every single path in this quest, as well as how to counter the global node long distance relationship, as well as the boss ghost. To make this guide easier for you to navigate, I've attached timestamps in the description below, as well as a link to my introductory video where I explain how these guides work. First, let's look at the global, which is long distance relationship. While closer to the defender, the attacker gains a weakness debuff every 3 seconds, reducing their attack by 10% permanently. Staying far away from the defender causes these weakness effects to gradually fall off. Let's look at how to counter this. This global is arguably the easiest one in 6.1 to manage, since unlike most of the others, there is no passive degeneration associated with this one. It's simply a reduction of attack. However, you will be punished for playing too aggressively. Champions with very aggressive playstyles such as Captain Marvel, Vision Arcus, Warlock and also She-Hulk can work, but you'll want to back off occasionally to let some weakness debuffs fall off. Having 1-3 to three on you doesn't reduce your attack too much, However, once you reach 4, you'll start noticing a serious attack reduction. If you find yourself with too many weakness debuffs, try parrying and backing off, instead of immediately hitting into the opponent. Champions with much slower playstyles do perform better in this quest, since they can limit the amount of weakness debuffs they receive, without it affecting their playstyle. This includes champions such as Archangel, Magneto and Cap Infinity War. Another option is to consider champions with easy access to debuff purification, such as Kingpin, Aegon or Nick Fury, since these champs can easily purify multiple weakness debuffs and still play aggressively. By the way, these pieces of utility are nice to have for this quest, but they are far from required. They'll simply just make your life easier here. One of the reasons this global is the easiest of 6.1 is because you can use the willpower mastery to heal whenever you have a weakness debuff on you, meaning you can easily recover from getting clipped by a special attack or missing a parry. Of course you don't need the willpower mastery for this quest, but it does provide a nice bonus. Now let's look at the layout of the map. This quest is very chaotic in its layout, it's not very clear to see how to fully explore most efficiently. There are 9 different individual paths, however 4 of them, the ones on the right hand side of the map, are taken after taking one of the left hand side paths. Just to be clear, this quest can be explored in just 3 entries, however I'd recommend doing it 4 times so you have an easier time during completion. This quest is unique in that a large portion of the total fight to nodeless except for the global, allowing for a much simpler fight. Let's start with path A, which is the final path you should take when exploring this quest, as it is by far the longest, with 21 fights in total, including the boss. It is found starting on the far left before taking the outermost ring and then finishing down the middle starting with Ultron and ending with Omega Red. Ultron has the recovery node, meaning he'll recover an extra 50% health than he would normally. Make sure to parry him when he reaches intervals of 50% and 25% health to turn off his regeneration. Your best robot counter will work here just fine and be mindful of his evade every 7 seconds. Venom Pool is a nodeless fight, so as long as you can manage the global, he'll go down without much stress. Also, be mindful of the unstoppable buff that he has a chance to get from his signature ability. The enhanced abilities node means Miles has a greater than normal chance to evade, so bring a strong evade counter to make your life easier here or simply hit him until he loses all of his evade charges. There's no limber so you can just hit him when stunned to completely bypass the evade. Black Panther is a nodeless fight, but can still be a tricky opponent due to his reflective stun. You can avoid it with a strong tenacity counter like Omega Red, a strong armor breaker like Corvus Glaive, or simply don't stun him while he has an armor up buff.
The last stick node means Groot only converts his pacifism charges to buffs when he reaches 100 stacks. So you should easily be able to kill him before that happens. Be aware of his shortened debuff duration and the global and he'll go down without any trouble. Storm is another nodeless fight, so any champ in the game can get her down. Just remember the global. The same can be said for Drax, who is found right after fighting Storm. Next is Superior Iron Man. The Arc Overload node allows him to heal every 20 seconds, which can be countered by a strong nullifier or by a hard hitter that can outdamage the regeneration, which is not very strong. Also be aware that your power will be locked at 2 bars. This is the same for Iron Man and the 6 fights after him. Wolverine has recovery, meaning his regeneration is much stronger than what Iron Man's was. So I definitely recommend bringing someone that can manage his regen by either heal blocking or reversing, or by keeping his power below one bar, as that limits the amount of health he regenerates. Magic starts the fight with one bar of power. This has a chance to activate her Limbo ability, so be prepared to take a bit of damage at the start of the fight. It won't always happen, but be prepared for it. Apart from that, it's a regular magic fight, so your best magic counter, whether that's Falcon, Blade, Omega Red, Archangel or someone else will work here just fine. Hulk as the Outlast and Adaptive nodes, providing an extra level of damage resistance on top of the Global node. So I'd recommend bringing a strong damage over time champ or someone with guaranteed crits to easily bypass this. This is not essential though, any champ works but will just take longer due to your weakness debuffs and the resistance buffs that he gets. The most notable node here is the Limba node, reducing the duration of your stun debuffs by 10% every time you stun him. His heavy attack is very easy to punish, so bait heavy attacks through your block for openings if you run out of parries. Also be careful if you're using a champ with projectiles, since he has an extra 20% chance to evade those on top of his base ability. The node Rainbow of Power states that doubled power gain triggers all the way, which can be slightly confusing. What it means is he gains his passive power gain over 2 bars at intervals of 30% health and also 50% health. This is combined with Strike Back which gives him a bar of power when you throw your special attack. So make sure he has minimal power when he reaches 50% and 30% health, unless you have a way to tank his special 3. Punisher is another nodeless fight, so anyone can do the job here, but be careful using someone with low block proficiency since his special attacks are almost impossible to avoid. This is arguably the most dangerous fight in the whole quest. For the first 5 seconds of the fight, both you and Jane are indestructible, after which both champions attacks will deal damage equal to their current health. For Jane, this is just shy of 180,000 attack. Try and stun her just before the indestructible ends, so that you can safely hit her once it expires. Chance with high health or guaranteed crits are ideal, because you want to kill her as soon as possible. Vision is a nodeless fight. So anyone works here, you only have the global to deal with.
the final section before the boss starts with Nightcrawler. He can be quite tricky since he is fully stun immune, so you can't use your parries to get around his evade mechanic. You'll need to bring someone that can fully shut down his evade mechanic, such as Professor X, Corvus Glaive, Ghost, Falcon, or someone else with strong evade prevention. If he does evade, you'll receive a 15 second fatigue debuff. Every time you hit him with his fatigue debuff, you'll suffer 25% of Nightcrawler's attack rating as damage. You'll need to bring someone that can handle bleed for this Korg, since he has the Caltrops node, which bleeds you every time you dash back. Someone that can handle bleed and also get around Korg's rock shield, such as Ghost or Magneto are ideal, or you can simply brute force your way through his shield with someone that can manage the Caltrops node. One of the other nodes is Power Reserve, reducing the cost of all special attacks from both you and Korg by 50%. He has the Enhanced Special 1 node, however only the first hit is unblockable. The bullets after the initial hit can be safely blocked if you want. War Machine is much more likely to throw his special one with the special one bias node. However, he also has triple power gain from the energize node. So it's very easy to safely push him to a special two and bait that instead. Be aware that he does have aggression armor as well. So if he plays two passively, he can build up many armor passives, reducing your damage significantly. Someone with easy access to armor break or a strong power controller can get around this. Like Korg, Omega Red also has the Caltrops node. A robot here is ideal here to limit the amount of spores you get on yourself. However, a robot is not essential. Be aware that he will be very aggressive, so make sure not to get backed into the corner. Otherwise you will take significant damage from his spores. Congratulations, you've beaten path A. Now for path B, which you can find starting on the second outer ring, starting with Old Man Logan, and ending with Thing. Logan is a nodeless fight, so any champion works here. His regeneration can easily be outdamaged, so a regen controlling champ is far from necessary here. Yellowjack has Power Sting 3.0 meaning you'll be afflicted with a power sting passive for the entire fight, disallowing you from throwing special attacks. So bring someone that doesn't need special attacks to deal significant enough damage. The lunatic node means during a full moon, Moon Knight gains all of his lunar abilities, including his evade mechanic. To make sure you're not fighting him during a full moon, you can check his ability page on the Art May website, which can be found in the description. Unstoppable Colossus is a nodeless fight, so you only have to deal with his unstoppable and the global. You can bring a slow champion or a strong nullifier to make your life easier, but it's not essential. The Hyperion fight is another nodeless fight, so your best Hyperion counter will work just fine here, whether that's Doctor Doom, Doctor Octopus, Magic or someone else. This Sentinel can be quite a long fight, since all classes except mutants have their attack reduced by 50%. Magneto is by far the best option for this fight, but if you don't have him, I'd recommend using a strong cosmic and try to limit how much analysis he gains, since that will make the fight longer.
Iron Man is another nodeless fight on this path, so any champion will work just fine for him. From the nodes that Morningstar has, she will have two souls in this fight. Meaning you'll want to use someone that can handle bleed to avoid the constant damage from hitting her. This fight also starts a four fight chain of prove yourself and dismay, so you won't be able to do any damage until you reach 15 hits. And if you lose your combo, you'll start passively degenerating. The strength of the degen scales with how much combo you've lost. War Machine will start the fight with 24 very weak Fury and Armor Up buffs, which you can take advantage of with someone like Dr. Voodoo or Ronin, or simply ignore the buffs and treat him as a normal machine, with about 50% more attack. Be aware of his special one, as the block damage from that can add up if you don't bring a hard enough hitter. Luke Cage is the next fight, and he has the Reborn node which gives him indestructible for every 5 hits he lands. As long as he doesn't hit you, this node won't have any effect, and you will only have the global to worry about. The final fight in the Prove Yourself and Dismay block is Spider-Man Symbiote. The Sadus node means he'll get 50% attack for each debuff on him, so I'd recommend bringing an evade counter that doesn't rely on too many debuffs. Hawkeye is another nodeless fight, so simply anyone works here. The next fight is Jane Foster, which was covered in path A. You can refer back to that timestamp for this fight. Just like Hawkeye, Psylocke is a nodeless fight, and defeating her will deactivate the three linked nodes for the next four fights, including All or Nothing and Strike Back, both potentially problematic nodes. Black Panther has no nodes apart from the global, but remember to watch out for his stun reflection if you parry him when he has an armor up buff. Ms. Marvel is the next nodeless fight, so anyone will work here just fine. The same can be said for Red Cyclops, as he also has no nodes, apart from the global. Remember to watch out for Daredevil's debuff shrugging when he has a combo of 15 or less. Bringing an anti-tenacity counter makes the fight easier, but it is not essential. Like the previous few fights, he has no nodes apart from the global. Thing is the final nodeless fight on this path, so he doesn't demand a specific counter, you'll just need to be comfortable fighting Thing and managing his rock stacks. Congratulations, you've beaten Path B. Now Path C, which you can find on the two inner rings of the map, starting with Old Man Logan and ending with Ghost Rider.
We already covered the old man Logan fight during path B, so refer back to that timestamp for this fight. The next six fights starting with Vision are all nodeless fights apart from the global. Anyone technically works for this fight, but be mindful of the occasional bursts of power he'll get throughout the fight. Remember that White Magneto has a big advantage against Metal Champs, so try to avoid using any hashtag Metal Champs for this fight. Anyone else should dispose of this guy easily. Ant-Man's glancing will make this fight slower than others, but anyone will get this guy down. You can use damage over time champs to bypass the glancing. A strong slow or nullify champ works exceptionally well here to deal with Juggernaut's unstoppable buffs, but if you can't fit one onto the team, anyone will work. Since Mordo is a nodeless fight, any decent Mordo counter will work just fine here. If you don't have a super strong Mordo counter, try to bait out heavy attacks for your openings and try to land a hit while he has his power gain buff to shut it off. Scarlet Witch will have a small chance to place poison debuffs on you when you crit. So you may want to use someone that can handle poisons, or alternatively, someone that can shrug the poison debuffs off. You can also use champs that don't crit, so that you won't get poisoned. We already covered the thing fight on path B, so refer back to that timestamp on this fight. The next three fights will be potentially very frustrating, as they all have the Coward node. The best way to do damage is by repeatedly hitting your block, which will slowly tick the opponent's health down. Try to land a few basic combos every now and again to avoid getting trapped into the corner. An extra layer of, dif layer of difficulty is that all of the opponent's attacks are unblockable. Unlike most Magnetos, you don't technically need a non-metal champ for this fight, as you won't be relying on parries. The one good thing about these three fights is that anyone technically works for the Coward node, so you're not forced to bring anyone specific. Someone that can reduce Deadpool's healing is encouraged, but not required. Remember, he heals more the more power he has. Rocket Raccoon is the final Coward fight. And like the previous two, anyone will work. However, Rocket has the highest attack and highest crit rate of the three, so be very careful. Falcon provides a nice reprieve from the previous three fights, as he is nodeless, so anyone works. Remember to not let him dash back and hold block for too long, as that will activate his dangerous lock-on, reducing your ability accuracy by 100%, meaning you won't be able to parry. The final fights leading to the boss are all nodeless. A regen counter is nice to have for this Deadpool, but if you can manage his power well, that will limit the amount of health he gets back.
The only thing to be really mindful of in this fight is Agent Venom's frequent tenacity, and also the global. Try to bait heavy attacks through your block for your openings if you don't have a strong tenacity counter, such as Omega Red or Apocalypse. The same can be said for Crossbones. Like Agent Venom, he will also shrug a lot of your parry stuns, but he is also nodeless. Kingpin continues the shrugging theme. Remember to not let him throw a special 2 when he has his overpower buff, as it will be unblockable and it will also activate a very long unstoppable buff, so just bait special ones. Try to keep distance during his special 1 to let weakness debuffs fall off if you have any. Anyone will work for this nodeless rogue? Just remember your debuffs will only last for 30% of their normal duration. Ghost Rider is also a nodeless fight, so anyone can get him down with ease. Congratulations, you've beaten Path C. Now Path D, which is the easy path that I'd recommend for completion. However, and this is very important, you are not required to run this path, it's simply the easiest way to get to the boss and through to the next quest. You can explore this entire quest by simply running paths A, B and C. However, since those three paths are all very long and all have a few annoying fights, you may want to run Path D for a simple completion run. Path D starts with Old Man Logan and ends with Thing. Note that for every fight on this path, the only node you have to manage is the global node. Old Man Logan is a nodeless fight, so any champ works here. His regeneration can easily be outdamaged, so a regen controlling champ can be used here, but it's far from necessary. Vision is a nodeless fight, so anyone does work here, but just be aware of the power gain that he will occasionally get from his signature ability. Like the rest of the fights on this path, Deadpool is also nodeless. You can use someone that can alter Deadpool's regen rate or completely bypass the regen. However, just by maintaining his power meter by baiting special ones, you can significantly reduce the amount of health he will regen. The only thing to be really careful of in this fight is Agent Venom's frequent tenacity. Try to bait heavies through your block for your openings if you don't have a strong anti-tenacity champ. The same can be said for crossbones. Like Agent Venom, he will also shrug a lot of your parry stuns, but he is also nodeless. Kingpin continues the shrugging theme. Remember to not let him throw a special 2 when he has his overpower buff, as it will be unblockable and will also activate a very long unstoppable buff. 
So just bait special ones for an easier time. Anyone will work for this nodeless rogue, but just remember your debuffs will only last for 30% of their normal duration because of rogue's abilities. Like the rest of the fights on this path, Ghost Rider is also nodeless, so anyone will get him down with ease. Remember he is incinerate and bleed immune, so don't use champs that rely on those two debuffs. Thing is the final path fight before the boss, so he's also nodeless which means he doesn't demand a specific counter. You'll just need to be comfortable fighting Thing and managing his rock stacks. Congratulations, you've beaten Path D. Now let's talk about the final boss in this quest, Ghost. She has 9,099 attack and 233,226 health. This is arguably the easiest boss across all of Act 6. Almost any champ will work here. The presence of the Limba node does increase the difficulty here, but that's mainly a playstyle adjustment. The fight doesn't demand any specific champion or any specific piece of utility. I'd recommend bringing your strongest damage dealing champion and remembering to back off between combos in order to select the weakness debuffs from the global fall off, because they can significantly slow down the fight. Also, try to back off as much as you can when she's throwing her special attacks or heavy attacks. Because you don't want to let those weakness debuffs stack up too high. If you have champs that can reliably shrug debuffs, such as Nick Fury, Kingpin or Aegon, that will make the fight easier. But just like the rest of the quest, it's not essential to have those champions to counter the global. Remember, remember, if you have any questions about anything discussed in this video, please leave a comment or join my Discord to talk to me directly. I hope this guide helped make your journey through this quest easier, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we dive into Act 6, Chapter 1, Quest 4. I'll see you then.